morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare pra- practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures if you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be. But you don't know where to begin. You have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we're here every day on the bright side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're talking about, comments, success story, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. If you have questions about skin health or formulations or our Truth Skin Health products or the longevity business, 844 236 6010. That's 844 236 6010 is our number on the bright side. And if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com and purchase products right off the website. And you can also purchase our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream off of our website, truthtreatments.com. I've got a blog up with skin health information at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the bright side. We're talking about the connective tissue component of the body, and I know we've been talking about it for a long time, and for good reason. It's hard to come up with a disease state, a chronic degenerative disease state that doesn't in some fashion involve the connective tissue. For many of us, the connective tissue is overworked and undernourished, and the ultimate deterioration and breakdown of the connective tissue is the primary cause of aging, whether that aging is accelerated or just regular regular old aging. Connect, aging in many ways is a connective tissue phenomena, and this can be observed very visibly. The stooping, hunched over appearance that we have as we get older is a connective tissue problem. Scoliosis and osteoporosis are connective tissue problems. And of course, wrinkles, fine lines in the skin, crow's feet, all the things we hate about our skin as we get older, or most of the things that we hate about our, our skin as we get older, is a function of the connective tissue. Do you want to look young? You want to stay young? You want to be young? Especially when it comes to your skin? Work on your connective tissue. This is one of the reasons why I came out with my Truth Treatment products. Truth Skin Health products are connective tissue building topical products. They are topical strategies or they utilize topical strategies for building connective tissue in the skin. That's the point of my Truth Treatment products. They build connective tissue. If you want to stay young, you want to look young, you want to be young, you got to focus on your connective tissue. Of course, not just topically, but internally. And that means nutrition. Vitamin C is important for building connective tissue. Bone broth, important for building connective tissue. Cartilage from bones, building connective tissue. Glucogel caps, building connective tissue. Fucoid Z, building connective tissue. Vitamin A, zinc, MSM sulfur, building connective tissue. Hyaluronic acid, building connective tissue. Almost all of our anti-aging strategies are about building connective tissue. And of course, that also means exercise. Exercise is a very powerful way to support the building of connective tissue. From, uh, let's see here, where did I get this article here? Age dependent changes in connective tissue. I read that one yesterday. Age dependent uh, changes in connective tissue. 
Uh, the aging of connective tissues is especially important for the aging of organs and the connective tissue aging of organs is one of the reasons why the frequency of disease increases with aging. From the journal Medical Science Sports Exercise, physical implications for connective tissue and bone alterations resulting from resistance training. Quote, physical activity can increase connective tissue strength and mass, unquote. Quote, activation of the anti-gravity muscles must be accomplished to adequately stimulate connective tissue, unquote. Quote, the volume, intensity, and load-bearing nature of exercise training are important factors in causing connective tissue adaptations, unquote. All of this is to say, you gotta get your butt in the gym. No, not necessarily. Just, you can, you can do connective tissue building exercises at home. Just sitting and standing is a great connective tissue building exercise for, for your back and for your glutes. The connective tissue in your, uh, in, your, in your butt. Walking up the stairs is a great connective tissue exercise. And of course, stretching is also an important connective tissue building strategy. You improve oxygenation to the connective tissue by stretching. You improve detoxification of the connective tissue by stretching. The connective tissue is so darn important. It is the, it is the alive, living, visible representation of unity in the body, thus the term connective tissue. It connects everything. It's oneness. It unifies the entire body. Holds the body together. The connective tissue is the glue that links all of the body's zillions of parts into one unified whole. All the cells are linked together via the connective tissue. All the structures are linked together via the, the, via the connective tissue. It's the body's framework. And by the way, it doesn't just support the various structures and organs and glands in the body, but the connective tissue is responsible for feeding the cells. The connective tissue is responsible for oxygenating the cells and all of the various parts that are made up of the cells. The connective tissue is responsible for detoxification of the 100 trillion cells, building your connective tissue, strengthening your connective tissue is one of the all-time great detox strategies. The connective tissue acts like a filter to trap poisons and, and uh, filter them out of the body. In fact, if there's too much poisons, the connect, they will deposit in the connective tissue, and this is where autoimmune diseases come from. The connective tissue is also an electrical system. It maintains an electrical charge for the body to run on. We talked about this in the past. This is one of my, this, this blows me away about the connective tissue. It is literally a battery, an information storage device, an electrical storage device. It's a, a computer. If we could have the, had the eyes to see what the connective tissue really looked like from an electrical standpoint, we would see it like glowing. We would see it emitting energy, emitting light. The connective tissue is phenomenal and with all these important functions. What is really most concerning about the connective tissue is the fact that we have four different types of substances in the body, four different types of tissues they're called. We've got nerve tissue, we've got muscle tissue, and we've got surface tissue. They call that epithelial tissue. And then we've got the connective tissue. Of the four major tissues or four major stuff that the body is made of, four major stuffs that the body is made of, the connective tissue is the body's weakest link. This is important. The body is only as strong, or any system is only as strong as its weakest link, and the body is only as strong as the connective tissue. It's the weakest part of the connective of the body. It's the most fragile part of the four tissues. The muscles will heal quickly. When you damage your muscles, if you tear your muscle, that will heal relatively quickly. And same with the surface tissue, the epithelia. The nerves themselves, they don't get damaged very often unless there's some kind of mechanical trauma, perhaps some kind of compression. But the connective tissue, now that is another story. It's not only, not only is the connective tissue fragile, but it's in constant flux. It's in constant movement. It's, it's moving with the muscles. Every time we move our bodies, the connective tissue is moving. And in combination with its fragility, this leads to connective tissue. This makes connective tissue damage quite, since this makes connective tissue damage occur quite readily. Tendon strains, sprains, broken bones. These are all versions of connective tissue damage. And because it's the connective tissue that feeds the cell and breathes, breathes the cell and detoxifies the cell, once the connective tissue becomes damaged, we're off to the disease races. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we're back on 
on the bright side, got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. We also have archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com with search engines. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting up benfuchsarchives.com. And uh, we've got five years of programs, five plus years, almost, uh, I think five and a half years of programs up at brightsideben.com and uh, benfuchsarchives.com. You can purchase all the longevity products off my websites as well, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, and brightsideben.com and you can also sign up to join the brightside ben team love to have you on my team we can help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program together we can help change the world together and of course there is money to be made a little bit of money or a lot of money by using selling and sharing longevity products and the longevity philosophy all right, 844-236-6010 is our number, talking about the connective tissue. And yes, I know we've been talking about it for a long time for good reason. There isn't any disease states that don't on some level involve the connective tissue. Aging itself can be thought of as a connective tissue phenomena. Building the connective tissue, strengthening, strengthening the connective tissue not only is important for the structure of the body, the framework of the body, but because it is the connective tissue that feeds the cells, that breathes the cells, that detoxifies the cells. Keeping your connective tissue healthy is critical for the health of the, of the cells. We always say all disease is cell disease. By the way, the connective tissue has because it's it's nourishing and giving the cells life essentially we call the connective tissue the mother yes the connective tissue feeds the cell breathes breathes the cell detoxifies the cell nourishes the cell it is the source of the cell's life it is the womb the mother that's why we call it the matrix matrix means womb the connective tissue it has been referred to, parts of the connective tissue have been referred to as the extracellular matrix, the ECM. And that means breakdowns at the connective tissue level, at this matrix level, this maternal level, if you will, will have major implications in the development of all chronic degenerative diseases, all of them. If all disease is cell disease, all cell disease is about the connective tissue, the mother, the matrix. The connective tissue is the major site of disease. It's the major site of attack uh, by the immune system. It's the major site of attack by sugar. It's, it's the major site of attack by poisons because of the role it plays in filtering those poisons. The body will even use the connective tissue to store excess energy or energy that it cannot use. The connective tissue makes a wonderful storage depot for electricity, for electrical energy. That means energy which we input in the form of calories. Calories are energy. If we put in lots of calories and we're not using them or we're not processing them correctly, in other words, we don't have micronutrients to process them or we're not exercising and we still put in energy in the form of calories into the body, the body will end up storing that energy in the connective tissue. The connective tissue is actually a storage device for energy, excess energy, energy that's inputted without micronutrients for the use of that energy. That is calories without the B vitamins, calories without potassium, calories without vitamin C. This is Dr. Wallach's brilliant insight, is that we're getting so many calories, but we're not getting the micronutrients the trace elements, the tiny, tiny nutrients, the vitamins and the minerals, the mighty 90 essential nutrients, we're not getting the nutrients in our, in our cal with our calories. And so the body stores these calories in the connective tissue. It's a special kind of connective tissue that stores all of this excess dietary energy. It has a special name. Scientists call this connective tissue that stores all the excess calories adipose tissue, we call it body fat. Yes, body fat is connective tissue. It's a storage, energy storage form of connective tissue. It has other functions as well. It provides shock absorption and, and padding, but really its primary purpose is to store excess energy that comes in the form of calories, and body fat is connective tissue. The best way to reduce body fat connective tissue is to reduce the energy input. That is the, our caloric intake. And then to use nutrients that help the body process those calories, nutrients that help the body process energy more efficiently. And then do something with the energy, work out. And because a chronically activated stress response system will raise blood sugar and 
increase energy levels. Two ways our, our energy levels increase is from food and from stress. Because stress will raise your blood sugar, increase energy levels. Stress will also stimulate the production of body fat. If you can't lose body fat, no matter what you're doing, chances are pretty good your cortisol is high. You're stressed out. And that could be emotional stress, mental stress. It could be physical stress, physiologic stress, inflammatory stress. So eliminating or at least reducing your intake of inflammation promoting stressors, especially from foods and using mental and emotional anti-stress strategies can help you lose body fat, can help reduce energy input and reduce the storage of energy in the connective tissue that we call body fat, adipose connective tissue. The connective tissue is also a major site of mechanical trauma, mechanical damage. The connective tissue is attached to the muscles and when the muscles move in a way that they're not used to moving or they shouldn't move, it's gonna be the connective tissue that bears the brunt and that's what a sprained ankle is. That's what a broken bone is. The connective tissue is the most dynamic of the four tissues. Ultimately, broken bones, sprains, strains are a sign that the connective tissue has been damaged. The connective tissue takes a relatively long time to heal, by the way, particularly cartilage and tendons and ligaments. The connective tissue that uh, is in, these, uh, in the joints and in the vertebrae, it's white. And you could tell uh, the whiteness of the connective tissue, the whiteness of the cartilage is an indicator and refers to how slowly these tissues will heal. That's because the whiteness means there's not a lot of blood supply to this connective tissue. So uh, it's, it, there's a myth that the connective tissue doesn't heal, that cartilage doesn't heal. Well, it does heal, but you just have to be more, you have to just pay more attention to it. You have to be more conscious about your nutritional supplementation as well as exercise. Exercise is an awesome way to build cartilage and tendons and ligaments. Connective tissue has a hand in everything. All disease is cell disease. All cell disease is about the connective tissue, about the deterioration, the congestion, and the ultimate hardening of the connective tissue. That is really how, what it's all about. First, the connect, and this is all disease, folks. First, the connective tissue breaks down, deteriorates. Then you get congestion. Then you get, that's the inflammatory process. In the old days, they used to call it catarrh. This uh, congestion clogs up the works and ultimately it leads to a hardening of the connective tissue. So you get deterioration, you get inflammation and congestion, and then you get a hardening of the connective tissue. That's pretty much what happens when we get sick. And because the connective tissue are diseased, and because the connective tissue is responsible for feeding the cells, once the connective tissue is deteriorated and congested and hardened, you're off to the disease races. In other words, nutritional deficiencies, lack of oxygen, toxicity, those are our three major causes of disease. They cause a deterioration of the connective tissue, which results in inflammation followed by fibrosis. I just told you all diseases there, folks. All 12,800 chronic degenerative diseases are summed up in that one sentence. Nutritional deficiencies, lack of oxygen, and accumulation of toxicity, and that includes sugar, cause a deterioration or a degeneration of the connective tissue, which results in an inflammatory process, a protective process, followed by fibrosis. That's it. That's all diseases. Take that to the bank and take that to your chronic disease specialist. It's so important because it means this is our strategy for getting out of the jam we're in if we're dealing with a chronic long-term illness. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We will return with more good health information right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you, 844-236-6010. Get your calls here in just a sec. If you want to purchase any of our Longevity products, please head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. If you are um, getting the idea that connective tissue building is something that you want to start using or start uh, focusing on in terms of health, get on the glucogel caps. The glucogel caps are connective tissue building substances, and yes, I know good and well, they are uh, designed or marketed or directed for folks who have arthritis or joint problems, but really the glucogel caps provide raw materials for all connective tissue building, including your skin. Yes, the glucogel caps made with glucosamine are important for anti-wrinkles or for fighting wrinkles, keeping wrinkles at bay. The glucogel caps are important for the connective tissue in your blood vessels, so they're important for protecting you from heart disease. I'm gonna continue talking about heart disease tomorrow and its relationship to connective tissue. Cholesterol deposits in the heart when the connective tissue breaks down. Glucogel is, 
almost like uh, it's like a cholesterol reducing nutritional supplement because you'll strengthen your blood vessels even though it's not marketed as a heart drug or blood drug or, or supplement i should say the glucogel caps are just that the connective tissue in that underlies the intestine underneath the surface when that breaks down we can deal with leak we can we, we can start to have to confront leaky gut syndrome many of you have heard of that term leaky gut syndrome is the beginning of the disease process the chronic degenerative disease process the glucogel caps will help support connective tissue in the gut as well and for the brain too alzheimer's disease parkinson's disease dementias even perhaps huntington's disease all of these thought to be incurable are really based in the connective tissue, the brain's version of connective tissue. So the glucogel caps can help you there as well. All right, 844 is our number. Speaking of Alzheimer's disease, this is from the journal Diabetologia, 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 or Logia. Uh, new link found between diabetes and Alzheimer's disease. Yes, we've been talking about that forever. That's type 3 diabetes. That's what Alzheimer's disease is. It's not just the sugar, though, now that you know. It's the damage of the sugar. It's the sugar's damage on the connective tissue in the brain, creating little holes that the body now, uh, the brain and the body have to patch up. That's what those amyloid plaques are that everybody wants to be vaccinated or, or the doctors want to create vaccines for. Worried well may be boosting the risk of heart disease. That is, folks who needlessly worry that they have a serious or they will get a serious illness, they call them the worried well, may be boosting the risk for developing heart disease, and that's according to the British Medical Journal. Anxiety is a known risk factor for heart disease. Why? Because anxiety is part of the sympathetic nervous system. It's part of the emergency nervous system. It's not per se the anxiety. It's not specifically the anxiety that's responsible for the, uh, for the heart disease. It is the sympathetic overdrive that the anxiety is part of. Remember, we're, we're simplifying here on the bright side, you guys. Simplexity, the sim simple ideas that underline seemingly complex surface phenomena. So it seems like the body can break down in all these different ways, but underneath you're going to find the same things. You're going to find all diseases. You're going to find an activated sympathetic nervous system. You're going to find deterioration and degeneration of tissue. You're going to find toxicity and you're going to find inflammation and you're going to find plaques and fibers, fibrosis. That's it. You don't need a specialist. You don't, that's why specialists don't do anything for anybody. We break down in the same basic way, no matter what our health challenges are. If I have to, if I had to sum up the message of the bright side, the number one message of the bright side, it's that health and disease are simple concepts once you understand how the whole thing happens. That's what a doctor should be doing for us. They should be teaching. Doctor means teacher. It doesn't mean pill pusher. It doesn't mean a disease mongerer. It means teacher. Doctors should be teaching us how the body breaks down, or somebody should be teaching the doctor how the body breaks down. Because once we get this, once we understand how the breakdown occurs, we will be liberated. We will be free from the medical model, from the modern medical model of uh, the medical model, because it's not so modern. Even in ancient Egypt, we had the tyranny of diagnosis. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Robert in Las Vegas, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning, Mr. Ben. Thanks for taking my call. Appreciate it. What's going yeah. on, bro? How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. All right. Uh, thanks for taking my call, by the way. Um, yeah, sure. So you said something the other day that made my ears twitch. Okay. Uh, I like that. Before. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. You, you were talking to some person that was having problems, and he was talking about being a vegan. He made a comment that vegan is not healthy. Not I, healthy. I didn't quite say healthy. that. I said you have to be careful if you're a vegan. I don't think I said it's not oh, healthy. Okay. Okay, right. go ahead. You won't put words in your mouth. But uh, I listened to a young lady on uh, Power Hour with George Riley a couple weeks ago who is a noted vegan. Her name was Ellen. I forget her last name. And uh, she made two very good points for being a vegan. And quite frankly, I find them hard to argue with, but I'm sure you'll shoot me down. So here we go. No, not necessarily. Let's hear them. I, I don't have a problem with veganism. But I'm just saying you've got to be extra careful because there's certain nutrients you're not going to get. But go ahead. Whoa, okay. whoa, whoa. I'm glad you said that. Uh, she said one reason humans don't need to be vegan and probably shouldn't be is because we don't have a dental apparatus for it. Meaning we don't have what, the dental apparat apparatus, do you say? That, yeah, that's my word. Let me, let me we don't have the teeth to, to, to be vegan or to be a non-vegan? To be, to be vegan. Or, I'm sorry, to eat meat. So let me okay, so, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll knock that one down first and then tell me what the other point was. Okay. Um, okay. The other thing is we don't have the digestive tract. Okay, well, those are old. Those are old myths. Okay, 
And she's just repeating right. old myths. You know, sometimes people get these ideas they hear about and they read, they don't think about them. They just read them. They become slogans. So, yes, I've heard this. Okay. Let me let me tell okay. you how we evolved on the African savanna. We evolved okay. to eat anything we could find. Anything. We are omnivores. You understand what I'm saying? We are not selective about the foods we eat. And this is because uh, this is a survival mechanism. Food was scarce. So, no things, ben, to yes, yes. Food. They're primarily carnivores. So we're a compromise. We're, we're a compromise. That's what an omnivore is. An omnivore is a compromise. You've got to make some sacrifices because in order to process meat and to chew meat and to, to uh, address meat from a digestive system perspective, you've got to do things that, you, that, aren't, that, that are the opposite of what you have to do for vegetables. So we compromised. Our ancestors were the ones who survived on the African savanna by having a little of each. Yes, we're not pure meat eaters. That's true. And we're not pure vegetarians either. That's true. We're omnivores. So we have some compromises. Our teeth are, are, are there are some, there's some grinding activity and there's some chewing activity that can take place in the teeth, but certainly we're not we're going to be eating raw meat like a lion. But there is, a, we, we are designed to eat anything. There's a few animals in nature that are called omnivores. Most animals in nature are either carnivores or, or, uh, or uh, herbivores. But uh, humans and rats, and I think pigs maybe, uh, are, there's a few animals that are omnivores. And this is a survival tool. Yes, we're not ideally meat eaters specifically. And so we've got to be careful with it. You can't go crazy with the meat. You know, you, you've got to be a little bit careful because that's how we're designed to be. We're designed to eat, eat a little of everything. You follow me? The fact of the matter is, what this lady cannot argue with, with is that the iron in meat is incredibly valuable. The protein in meat is incredibly valuable. Uh, there, uh, mineral Meat is probably the densest of all nutrient foods. And, and from an evolutionary perspective, our brains started to evolve at a very rapid pace when we cooked our meat. You follow me there, sir, Robert? Yeah. No. And that doesn't even talk about omega, uh, omega fats and, uh, and uh, vitamin B12. There's other things that are only found in animal foods, and you just can't get around it. Hang on. We'll, we'll uh, finish up when we come back from our break. Okay. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Benny. 442-36-6010 is our number. We're talking to Robert in Las Vegas. Let me get Robert up here. Robert, are you there? I am. Okay, so let, let me just finish address this because you, I hear this periodically about veganism and vegetarianism. First of all, let me preface everything by saying I'm not... I do eat a little bit of meat. I'm not a big time meat eater. Meat eater. There is a problem with how we process our meat today. But every time, every once in a while, you get some somebody who, a militant vegetarian or militant vegan. I don't mean that in a mean spirited way, but they're very Passion. aggressive about their beliefs, and they'll start spreading these stupid ideas about how the human body has been constructed over uh, throughout evolution to promote their notion of what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing. So let's shoot down a couple of things right now, Robert, okay? First of all, meat okay. is loaded with nutrients, particularly vitamin and animal foods in general. You're not going to get vitamin A anywhere. You'll get beta carotene, but you've got to convert it into vitamin A. You're not going to get vitamin D, except you can get some in mushrooms a little bit. But for the most part, you're going to have a hard time getting vitamin D. You, meat is a dense source of incredible nutrients, okay? That having been said, the way we cook our meat and process our meat and all the crap that's given to our animals, et cetera, it's a horrible food these days. But from an evolutionary perspective, for a vegan to say we're not meat eaters is, is, is not fair and it's ignorant, especially if somebody's just kind of, you know, not doing the research. So let's talk about, uh, which this lady addressed, let's talk about the colon first. Let's talk about the teeth first, okay? So she says we don't have the teeth, right? We don't have the teeth, right? Well, she, here's the thing. We don't have the teeth to rip the animal off the, off the, you know, eat the carcass live like a lion does. But we have knives and forks. We process our meat. We slice it. We pound it. You follow me? That's how meat has been done. We make broths out of it. Are you, are you with me, Robert? Yeah, yeah. We, don't have, yeah. we don't have the sharp fangs like a lion to, to rip the meat off the bone, but we have been able to process it. When man started doing fire and processing his meat, cooking his meat, uh, because he was om omnivorous or omnivorous, his brain grew. His body grew. He got taller. He got stronger. Our Neanderthal ancestors were actually really big, 
brutes. So that's so much for the teeth idea, okay? Does that make sense? It does. Okay, the second thing is the colon. Human colons are short because they're supposed to be eating meat. Animals have long colons because they got to process all that grain, all the sea, uh, grass. Grass is very valuable, but we have a shorter one. Are you with me? I thought the human intestines stretch end to end be about 50 or 60 feet. Yeah, but it's not like a, it's not like a cow or a ruminant, you know? Ah, uh, okay. It, it, okay. We are just, it, that's why I'm saying we have compromises here. We're supposed to eat everything. So we have relatively short colons. Relatively short colons will allow you to process meat, uh, uh, meat more effectively, and it won't rot in the colon the way some people say. Now, you do have to have bacteria. You've got to have probiotics in the gut. Okay, you have to have um, uh, you have to have digestive enzymes, and the way we're supposed to eat meat, by the way, is that we're supposed to have it with vegetables. Then we'll have the enzymes in it, or we're supposed to eat our meat uh, uh, without too much cooking. You follow me? Gotcha, gotcha. So between uh, how we cook our meat, how we process our meat and making sure your meat is not filled with contaminants, hormones and such, we are definitely, definitely, there definitely is a tremendous advantages to eating meat and dairy and eggs for that matter. Eggs are nature's perfect food. So I'm, I'm defending meat here, and I'm not a big meat eater, but eggs, there's no, how do you argue against eggs? How does anybody argue against eggs, unless you have an allergy? Hello, Robert? Yeah. yeah. How, what, what is the vegan's position on eggs? How do you argue against the nature's perfect food? She didn't eat anything from an animal. Nothing. I know that, but how do you defend the idea of not eating not eating eggs? Aside from aside from spiritual or philosophical, you know that's different, and I, I support that. If somebody, you know, I don't like eating Bambi, I don't like eating animals, I, I don't like doing that. But you know, that's called the food chain. I don't like killing things, but that's how we're designed. So how does she? De- how does the vegan defend against eating eggs? What's their logic there? Ah, uh, great, 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 you got me right. I, I don't know, because egg is a perfect food. It's very easy for the body to process, with the exception of people with allergies. All right, I'm going to move, Robert. Does that help? It does. Thanks, bud. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. All right, let's see. Do, do, do. Let's go to... I'm having a problem with my board here. Who is next on the line here? Hey, uh, uh, Brandon, will you, will you put some... Will you, uh, oh, there you are. Kurt. In Alabama. Welcome to the Bright Side, Kurt. Kurt? Yes, hello, Paul, Mr. Smith. Hey, what's up? Thanks for taking my call. I have, for the last month, experienced evidently a severe allergic reaction to the drug Ciproheptad. My doctor wanted me to try it because it may help me, make me hungry. So, I could so what does the drug say, the drug again? Ciproheptad. Ciproheptad. And he wants, and what's he doing it for? What is he using it for? Uh, she, was, she was, my ARMD was uh, having me take it to see yeah. if it would make me hungrier to help me gain weight. I do drink tea uh, about three cups a day with sugar. Uh, now, you, are you saying, I, I don't know the drug you're talking about, though. I, I know a drug called ciproheptadine. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, sir. It must be. Yes, sir. Cipro, but, I, but they're giving it to you for weight? Yes, to make, to stimulate my... My appetite. appetite. I had, okay. I had a severe reaction to it. Uh, my skin broke out, massive flaking from my ears, face, neck, and rash all over my. Okay. Well, let me let's get you fixed up here. Let me ask you a couple things real quick. Are you uh, do you have cystic fibrosis or do you have? No. Why is he using an appetite stimulant? Never had an app. Never had any medical problems, other than anemia several years back. I'm taking aspirin for too long, I suspect. Well, so you're not, if you don't have any medical problems, why are you taking aspirin? Why are you taking uh, ciproheptadine? I'm, I'm not taking aspirin anymore, Doc. Uh, doc. But why were you? Why were you? Uh, I was, everyone was told for a long time to take a half. Oh, aspirin. I see. You just took a prophylactic, like, t- just to prevent problems. Yes, sir. Okay. Isn't that interesting? So you're taking all these drugs to prevent problems, but you're healthy, and now you have a side effect from the drugs. Only time I've like had a problem with medically is when I've done exactly what the doctor said to do, and that's the only times I've ever had a med- any health problem. 
Isn't that, inter- isn't that interesting? So uh, you're, you're perf- you're, everything's good. You have energy and you don't feel crappy or anything like that, except for now you have the, the allergic reaction. Other than that? I did a lot of exercise. I, I feel I get plenty enough. I'm about 60 years old. The worst part about this doctor was the massive flaking of my scalp. I have lost some hair. Since you've been on the drug. Since you've been on the drug. Okay, so let me let me let me understand a couple things here. You're being given a appetite uh, enhancer just because what the doc? I, I'm confused here. Why would he give you an appetite enhancer unless you're losing a lot of weight or something? That's yes, that's what I was trying to tell you. I've lost 25 pounds over the past year and a half. And well, why is he attributing it to not eating? Or you just don't? Is that true that you're not eating? No, I was eating okay. She just wanted me to eat more. Unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Here's how you gain weight, okay? I, I, that's, I, I'm, I'm totally confused. I must be missing something because that cannot be that a doctor would give you a drug to boost your appetite to gain weight. Although I know if you have cystic fibrosis, or, or they want to eat up your calories, but that's still a dumb strategy. Here's how you gain weight uh, if you want to gain weight. And I think I was talking about this a couple days ago. If you don't want to gain fat, you want to gain muscle, right? Yes, sir. You don't want to just gain f- calories. You want muscle. So what you do is you work out, get your butt in the gym, with, and do resistance training. Okay? Usually I say you don't have to do that, but for gaining weight, you really want to do some resistant, resistance training, bench pressing or something. Okay? okay? You with me? And then when you come home from the gym, do bone broth protein, do whey protein, do uh, all your supplements, especially creatine and something called branched chain amino acids. There's a ton of them, ton of anabolic nutrients, vitamin A, zinc. These are anabolic nutrients, nutrients that will help you process sugar and help you build muscle. And you do it when you come home from the gym. You follow me? Creatine, if I didn't say creatine, definitely be on creatine when you come home from the gym. All right, all of this will allow you to, to, to get stronger. It'll be an upward spiral. Instead of a downward spiral breakdown, you'll have an upward spiral of build up. You'll work out, you'll use the nutrients, you'll get stronger, you can do more workouts, you'll use the nutrients, you can get stronger, you'll do more workouts, more tense workouts, and all of this will build muscle mass and you'll gain weight. You follow me? Okay. And at the age of 60, it's pretty much, a, you, you really need to do that because your body is gonna start to shut down if you don't do it, all right? Exactly. Yes, so I, I can that I must be missing something. I cannot imagine why a doctor would do that to a perfectly healthy person. You're perfectly healthy, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, I got to go. Thanks so much for your call. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, by the way, when I was talking to Robert in Nevada, the large intestine, we have a short large intestine. We do we do have a relatively somewhat long small intestine, but we got lots of hydrochloric acid in the stomach. We got a relatively uh, uh, we got a short small intestine. We should be eating meat. Just don't spend all day eating meat. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now.